And good morning. I went to an AI event last week, and I'm absolutely on red alert for the small business community, and you should be too. And I'm going to do something about it. Good morning. Get in here. Let's do a show. Welcome into Small Business Mornings. I am your host, Pat Miller, the founder of the Idea Collective. Small Business Mornings is on the air every Monday morning at 9 a.m. Central, exclusively for solopreneurs and small business owners to get together and exchange notes, get each other pumped up for the week. It's powered by the Idea Collective. We bring entrepreneurs together to provide the support and resources they need to succeed. It's our way to live out the mission. It's your dream. Don't grow it alone. Coming up on today's show, outside of the impending AI doom that I feel for small businesses, we're going to have some fun because uh, the Super Bowl was last night and it was super fun. And I know, I know, I am prognosticating. I know who will win the presidential election. If you want to know, listen to this guy because I know. So I'm going to make a big prediction on today's show. And our question of the week, exclusively for small business owners, are you using interns or not? Plus a, an expertly curated meme of the week from none other than Abby Miller. So let's get into it. We'll start with an AI update. I attended a half-day AI workshop last week hosted by Concurrency. It's a great event, Concurrency, mad shout out. It was an overflowing room, probably 150 people there all wanting to get together and learn about what AI is doing for our business. So it was a great event. And while the event was definitely kind of targeted for bigger businesses, because all the businesses that were up there were bigger businesses and, you know, like in pro, like big businesses. I was there to listen for what I might be able to get out of this for us. And my big takeaway is we got to get going. Like we got to get going fast. Good morning, Adam. So I'm going to share my notes and what I heard because we need to get going on this, and I need to add some programming to the Idea Collective because of what I learned. So first, let's just say thank you to Nate Lasnowski from Concurrency for organizing the event. And the speaker that I found most exciting was a guy named Todd McLeese, who runs the Innovation Outpost. And Todd's talk kind of shed some light on how bigger organizations are thinking about AI and the workforce. Because if you think about it, when you run a big company, like a big company, you have rooms full of people doing individual job tasks and responsibility. When you're a small business like us, it's you just do a bunch of different stuff all at once. But when you run a bigger company, here's an entire floor full of people who might be able to be replaced with AI or upgraded, or you've got individuals doing job tasks. So when you start thinking about job skills and labor and where you can save or reskill or train people, you can start moving money around with zeros on the end of it. And he shared a concept that blew my mind. Like he said something that I'm writing it down and I thought, oh my God, we might be in trouble. I didn't write that down in the, in the notebook, but I definitely thought that when he said it. Because he talked about something called the durability of skills. Now, that seems, when you say it out loud, well, of course, the durability of skills. You learn a task, and how long can you use that task before that task is outdated, right? You learn a certain programming language, for example. How long can you use that programming language until it's outdated or a machine can do it for you? That's the durability of skills. And he said the durability of skills is trending downward. The amount of time that we can use a skill before it's no longer profitable, like it becomes obsolete or can be replaced, is trending downward. And this is the part that blew my mind. Good morning, Stephanie and Sarah. The thing that blew my mind is that the durability of skills is trending down to as low as 18 months for some skills. 18 months. 18 months is not a long time. And when you think about someone going to college for four years, they might have three skills expire 
inside that four years. I mean, think about that. That's how fast some of these skills are moving right now because of AI adoption and just how smart AI is getting. And then he shared a framework, which I want to share with you, because this framework helps me think about AI in a better way. Because AI to date, to me, has seemed to be, I now do this skill, now AI can do this skill for me. Like they're automating a skill that I was doing otherwise. It was very black or white. It was I do it or the computer does it. But he shared the skill in a different way, which I thought was really great. He said, if you take the work and you break the work down into the tasks, there are three styles of tasks. The task could be automated or it could be augmented or it's a truly human task. So when you think about the work in that way, that kind of opened my mind a little bit because I've been thinking this whole time that either I do it or AI does it, like the automation side of it. But when you think about the adoption with augmentation included, now that can really start to open our mind. And I think the easiest way for us to think about this is, say, social media. AI, I don't think, or at least my experience so far, it's not perfect enough to automate what we're going to write and put online. It's close, but it's not perfect. But it can be augmented. I can take the transcript of this show, run it through ChatGPT, say write four LinkedIn posts from this week's content, and it can come close. It can draft it, but it's not automated yet. It's still augmented. I need to go in and massage it. I need to go in and complete it but it's no longer a truly human task. You see how that works? And when he shared that model, I thought to myself, huh, now we really need to think about this because if I'm the leader of a small business community, I'm full of entrepreneurs whose livelihoods depend on using our skills. And we just learned that some skills are expiring as quickly as 18 months and this is how the big companies are thinking about how work is done. Automated, augmented, truly human. It is my responsibility inside the Idea Collective. And when I have the chance to talk to small business owners to sound the alarms and say, listen, friends, I'm not trying to be a futurist here. This is no longer a futurist issue. This is a right damn now issue. And we need to begin looking at our businesses and our services with a future-proofed eye. We need to be thinking about what are the tasks that we're currently performing as though they are truly human and they're no longer truly human. And here's where it hurts. We might not like the answers. We might think, ah, what I'm doing is a truly human task, and it really isn't. And if you think about what you do, the danger isn't getting your stuff automated. If you perform a task right now, the danger is getting your task augmented. Because if I've been paying someone to write all of my social media in a truly human task, but now I can get it AI-assisted and I can use it augmented, and save all of this money that I was paying an agency? I mean, that's how the change is going to happen. And that's going to happen quickly. So all of us, every single one of us, from my wife, your friend, the photographer, to Stephanie Kern, graphic designer goddess, all of us need to think about where do we fall in this decision tree? And if we're currently doing things that can be automated or augmented, how do we move up the value chain to do the things that are truly human more often? Communication, strategy, empathy, complex decision-making. Do you see what I mean? Because if you're right now just making the donuts every single day, that's not a plan moving forward. We must stop and think about the services we're providing and think about where we fall on the value chain. 
after this conversation and after this presentation, I, you know, I thought about it on the way home. I'm driving home. And I'm thinking, okay, Pat, you like to get excited about new stuff. You like doing new things. Are you overreacting? This is me driving, by the way. I don't know why I'm driving like this, but I'm driving. I'm driving. Beep, beep. I'm driving. Are you overreacting? And I decided, yes, I'm probably overreacting a little bit. However, as the leader of a community, I kind of have to. You don't want me to underreact, do you? Boy, I wish the Idea Collective would really have stepped into the AI programming 18 months ago. That doesn't do anyone any good. And when it comes to future proofing, wouldn't you rather know what the future is doing and react when you're ready rather than get caught off guard? Start losing clients because they're augmenting or automating the work that you were doing for them because you thought it was truly human? You kind of want me to do this, right? So I know that this is like out there a little bit. But I figure... When we talk about what's going on in the small business community, and when we talk about us building a life that we can make money on, we have to be thinking about this stuff. We just absolutely have to. So here's what I'm going to do about it. Inside the Idea Collective, I'm starting a regular conversation. We normally do things called idea slams where we share feedback and experience with one another. I'm starting a new series of shows that I'm calling AI Slams. And the AI slams are going to be very simple. I'm going to share what I'm seeing. We're going to do some show and tell. So if you're doing something with AI, I want you to see it and show it with the community. And I'm going to do some demos so we can literally play with it together. I don't have all the answers. I know I don't have all the answers. But I am trying to like be the drum major of this band saying, hey, everyone, like we need to go this way. We need to go this way because this is dangerous if we ignore it. And to be positive about it, we're ignoring a huge opportunity. Like we could make way more money if we make friends with this. What if we augment our services using AI and we now can service three times the number of clients that we could before because we embrace this technology? So it's easy to say, oh, my God, everything's falling apart. But you can look at it as, wow, here's a lot of opportunity for us as small business owners. So the takeaway from this, he shared the tasks that could be in danger of becoming obsolete. These low-level knowledge tasks is what he called them. Office support, customer service, sales. I want you to think about where in your deliverables, are you performing low-level knowledge tasks? Those are the tasks that we got to get rid of. We need to automate them and augment them for ourselves. We need to spend more time becoming cross-disciplined and thinking about the higher-level tasks, the irreplaceable, truly human tasks that we can perform for our clients. Because if we don't, we're going to be in trouble. We're going to be in trouble. I'm just telling you that right now. So the AI slams, they're starting today. 3 o'clock Central is the first AI slam. And I hope you'll join us so we can have this conversation and see where we can help you future-proof your business. But Todd McLeese, man, I'm telling you, that guy was amazing. I'm going to try and get him in front of the community because he really was special. Uh, loved his presentation. And again, thank you to Concurrency for sounding the alarms for me because my job is to help all of you win. And this is important because at the end of the day, this isn't a video game. We're not building a business because we feel like it. We're not playing house here. This is a threat to you and it's an opportunity for you. So let's have the, have the conversation and move forward confidently in this new era of productivity. So with that uplifting message, good morning, Dorothy, or Patty, good to see you. Uh, let's talk about literally anything else, shall we? Because that was kind of depressing pants.
Let's talk about the Super Bowl. Yeah. Let's talk about the Super Bowl. All right. Uh, there was the game. There were commercials. And in the game, there was, uh, you know, not a lot of scoring for the first half of the game. And then at the end, wow, it was awesome. Big time football game. Kansas City, of course, as you saw, wins another Super Bowl, back-to-back -back champs, three of the last five, blah, blah, blah. Let's talk about the commercials, because that's the part that matters. Did you see the Microsoft co-pilot spot? Now, I'm not going to go on and on about AI. I just want to use this spot as the example. Did you see this commercial? This was the commercial uh, that I know for a fact a big company person wrote it. Because the premise of this commercial is that there were doubters, right? The doubters, the doubters were challenging the heroes of the spot. They say, I will never open my own business. They say, I will never make a movie. They say, I will never build something. And the hero looks at the camera and says, watch me. Okay, cool spot, cool spot. And Microsoft Copilot is the bomb, fine, whatever. But I'm not going to go on and on about AI, I promise. But I can tell a big business person wrote this commercial. And it was a big business. It was an agency in Hollywood. I looked it up. And I can tell it was a corporate person that wrote the commercial because the villain of the spot, the person stopping you or challenging you to open your small business was somebody else. They said... I couldn't open my own small business. But as you know, and I know, er, the person holding us back from being successful as a small business owner is not someone out there. It's right here. Right here in this big, bald, beautiful melon. I'm not working hard in my small business to overcome the pressure people on the outside world are putting on me. I'm working hard to prove to myself that I can win. And you know this, like now that I've pointed this out, can you feel that? It's our own belief. It's our own abilities that stop us from winning. And I can prove it. Let's just put the word able into the statements that they used in the commercial and see if it's something that you may have said in your own head. I said, I will never be able to open my own small business. I said, I will never be able to make my movie. I said, I will never be able to build something. But I said, watch me. That makes sense? Our greatest enemy is not outside, out there. And our toughest competitor is not some other office down the street. Building your small business is a one-player game. And you are competing with yourself. And that voice in your head that tells you you can't. But every day, we got to take a deep breath. Got to get our coffee. And we got to say, watch me. One more note about the co-pilot commercial that I thought was really good. It said, your everyday AI companion. That is absolutely right on. Absolutely right on. Your everyday AI companion, that's where it's going. Sarah Deacon shares a comment. I didn't resonate with that ad at all. You're hitting why. See? Because it wasn't challenging what our motivation and our conflict is. It's not someone else that's stopping us from winning. It's ourself. Thank you, Sarah, for the feedback. Appreciate it. In other commercial news, the theme this year was like aliens and celebrities. You know? Some years, it's all about puppies or babies. But this year, it was about aliens. I counted five, and it might have been more, but five unique commercials about aliens. Was weird. And the other thing that I like to count, in addition to how many of something there is, I always count how many times Abby cries. That's like an Abbeyometer every year for the Super Bowl ads. How many times does Abby cry? Last year, the Abbeyometer was one. Last year, she only cried once. And you may remember the commercial where they show the lifespan of a dog and the dog dies. Remember that spot? 
Abby cried during that one. But this year, Abby only cried twice. And the one that got her this year was the Google ad for the visually impaired guy. The one that said one user in the frame, two users in the frame, and then three users in the frame because they had a baby. And she, we look over, David and I look over and she, <laughs> crying. <laughs> so that was the one that got her. There were two, I forgot what the other one was, but that was the one that really got her, her Super Bowl ad experience. The other part of watching ads with Abby, especially during the Super Bowl, and this goes like this. We'll be watching an ad, and she'll go, oh, 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 oh. That, that, I can tell that she recognizes one of the actors in the commercial, but she doesn't, like, remember. That's the guy. Um, that's the one from the show. That's, ah. Uh. And she starts thinking and gets out her phone and starts panic searching, and she's trying to get me to help her. I don't know any of these. I know none of these celebrities. None of them. But the conversation goes like this. That's the that's that's the English actress. The one that always plays the Americans. Um, Emily. And my, my son goes blunt. Yes. Yes. That happens like a lot. Or she'll just randomly yell out that, oh, that's the guy from Lost. I never watched Lost. They had 100 characters on Lost. But that's what happens during the Super Bowl commercials around here. We had a great spread. We ate all the food. It was amazing. Good times. There was one commercial that offended me, however. Did you get offended by any commercials? There was one that did offend me. Because when it came on, I'm like, I'm in this ad and I don't like it. That was offensive. <laughs> It's actually a pretty funny ad, but I saw it and I like literally was on the couch, chips in hand, big belly, like, like, hey, quit, you over there, quit being so accurate. <laughs> yeah, I was in that spot and I didn't like it. Oh, one more piece of uh, commercial news, by the way. So this commercial was funny, right? Matt Damon, Ben Affleck, Tom Brady. Dunkin' Donuts has announced that they're going to sell the track suits. So if you want one of those track suits, they're selling them tomorrow on their website at noon Eastern. So if you want to look like them, you can. Fun game, though, right? Fun game. Okay, let's talk about the 2024 presidential election, shall we? Because I know who's going to win. I know who's going to win. And America is not going to be happy because a new poll was released over the weekend. And an overwhelming amount of Americans are on the same page and the winner is guaranteed. The winner are you ready for this? You, you might want to write this down. In fact, this is probably going to be on CNN later. So hi, CNN. Welcome to my basement. Yes, a guy in his PJ pants is going to call the winner of the 2024 election. In fact, I wish I had the magic wall. Let's go to the magic wall and announce the winner. Uh, Small Business Mornings can confidently project the winner of the 2024 presidential election will be... An old guy. Oh, yeah. An old guy. There's a poll that got released over the weekend, an Ipsos poll, that said 86% of those polled think President Biden is too old to serve another term. 81 or 86%. 62% of those polled think Trump is too old. 59% think they're both too old. They're too old. Come on. So I can say, with confidence, the winner of the election will be an old dude. So what do we do? Support your guy, vote your team, and all that stuff, right? But I think we forget a few things. We forget just how old these two are. 
Biden today is 81. Trump is 77. In four years, Biden would be 85 and Trump would be 81. Here's how old they are. Do you want to know how old they are? Biden was 33 on the day Apple computers was invented in 1976. He was already 33. Trump was 35 on the day MTV launched. Nah, 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 nah. I'm 35. Wait, that was the ESPN, whatever, you get it. I was doing the planting the flag, moon man thing. 35 on the day that MTV launched. It's a long time ago. If you think about the oldest people you ever watched on TV, if I said, old person TV show, what is it? What would you say? Old person TV show, Golden Girls. Old person TV show. During the filming of the Golden Girls, Betty White was 63. Old person TV show, 63. So what are we going to do about it? Excuse me. We're going to do nothing about it, apparently. We're going to vote for your team, and we're going to complain about the other team, and we're going to say your guy is old, and we're going to end up with an old guy. Because I can't see a world where it's not one of the two old dudes that wins. And then what? If for some reason someone else runs on their ticket, uh, I can't see that happening. Kamala's 59, and comparatively to Joe, she looks like she's 12. Have you seen those two on a stage together? I mean, Kamala looks like his great-granddaughter. And Nikki Haley, who's the other Republican that's running, she's 52. But both of them have no chance of running unless they step aside or get uh, found guilty or whatever they, however that might happen. But I don't think it's going to happen. So here we are, folks. An old dude is going to win the presidential election, and it's going to be awful. So just get ready for a terrible year. So let's see. We're going to review today's show. AI is coming for your jobs, and an old dude's going to win the election. Today's great. But we can get the Dunkin' Donuts tracksuit, so we got that to look forward to. That's a good thing. On my LinkedIn, I've been asking people questions of the week, and I want to ask you a question. Have you used or do you use interns in your small business? Put it in the chat. Do you use interns in your small business, or would you like to? If you haven't yet, put in the chat, do you use interns in your business? And if you are using them, what do you use it for? So I've been engaging people on LinkedIn, asking them questions of the week, and then using the content here on the show. And this week's question, do you use interns in your business? It got a lot of answers, but very few actually use interns. Only about 20% of those that replied to me when I said, do you use interns, said that they do. And the best answer was from Vicki Byerke Sure. And she said, well, yeah, we do use interns at First Tech. And our experience has been incredibly positive. Through the SciTech Minnesota program, we've welcomed three interns who specialized in software engineering and data science. Rather than assigning them menial tasks, we've immersed them directly into our product development efforts. They've actually written code that's being used in our products today, helping us improve the tools used in corporate travel program management. We've been blessed with fantastic interns and we're prompted to hire one of our interns part-time while he continues his studies. It's a win-win. They gain valuable experience, and we get to advance our goals with their help. Thanks, Vicki. And that sounds like the best-case scenario to use interns, doesn't it? Get an intern, help them make the product better, teach them a bunch of stuff while they're there. But a lot of the folks said no. They said they wanted to have an intern, but they just don't have the business volume or the ability to manage them just yet. Another contributor gave me some feedback and said that he doesn't hire intern because he's in rural Iowa. There just aren't interns hanging around. When I think about my business and maybe for your business, having an intern 
sounds great, especially in a fast-moving field like software, like Vicky's, because I think it would be cool to have that fresh thought, that new perspective, and that experience in the business, which will be really valuable in the next few years. So think about it, because I'd never really considered having an intern for my business, but I certainly could. Having an intern help me plan the annual conference or having an intern uh, co-host the AI slams with me. Uh, there are a lot of ways that we could use them, and giving someone valuable experience to move the business forward seems like a win-win for everyone. So thank you to everyone on my LinkedIn that responded to that question, uh, and let's share this next week's question of the week. That is, have you used organic social media to grow your small business? Like, have you actually gotten business growth out of organic, non-paid social media? And if so, how did you do it? So we will ask that question on the LinkedIn. We'll get the answers here, put it back out on the show on Monday. All right, we need an uplifting meme of the week. Director of meme, Abby Miller, your friend, the photographer, hit me. The average human walks 900 miles per year and drinks 22 gallons of coffee. That means the average human gets 41 miles per gallon. <laughs> I think my miles per gallon is lower because I drink more coffee than the average human. 41 miles a gallon, that's pretty good. Pretty good. Thank you, Abby. Incredibly appropriate for this morning. All right, let's wrap up the show, shall we? If you've got a meme of the week, send it to me, because if you do, I'll give you a shout out and a free commercial on the air, because uh, memes are a good thing. Today at 3 o'clock Central, inside the Idea Collective Small Business Owners community, we are going to do the first ever AI slam. You heard me talk about it earlier. This is super important. We must get in front of this technology, and I have to make this part of our ongoing conversation inside the community. So join us and learn with us. Ask all of the questions. We are going to be figuring this out together to make sure our businesses can move forward. Also, in the scroll down below here, I've been sharing the upcoming small business community meetings. Uh, the community's meeting in Milwaukee a week from today and I think a week from Wednesday over in Madison. So if you're a member of the community, you want to get together in real life, we can do that. And a reminder that our digital summit is coming on May 1st, and our lineup keeps on getting better and better. We are going to announce that at the end of the month, I think March 1st. I think March 1st is the announcement date for the digital summit that's coming up on May 1st. But if you want to become a member of the community and try it out, scan that QR code that's right here It'll give you a two-week free trial in the Idea Collective, and you can join in on what we are talking about. That will does it. That will do it for this week's Small Business Mornings. It's on the air every week at 9 a.m. Central for solopreneurs and small business owners. It's powered by the Idea Collective. We are bringing entrepreneurs together to live out our mission. It's your dream. Don't grow it alone. I'm Pat Miller, founder of the